How do we start? You start. Okay, I'll start. Hi, I'm Melanie. I work as a copywriter for IKEA Communications. My name is Martin, and I work as a uh, creative leader at IKEA Food. But at the time we went on this trip, I was working together with Melanie as an art director at IKEA Communications. We were lucky enough to be chosen to go on an eyewitness field trip to Sierra Leone in February 2014. Okay, so every year, IKEA runs two good cause campaigns, Soft Toys for Education and Bright Lies for Refugees. The money raised from these campaigns go to fund projects run either by UNICEF, Save the Children or UNHCR. Eyewitness is a program which sends IKEA co-workers working on good cause campaigns out into the field to visit some of these projects. The idea being that co-workers get to see where the money goes and see how their hard work in the stores during the campaign affects kids and families in some of these poorest communities in the world. So in January, we got the news we were going to Sierra Leone. Are you excited? Are you nervous? Oh my God, you're so lucky. It's going to change your life. These were just some of the things people said to me. I didn't want to disappoint anyone with my vague answers, but the truth was I had no idea how I felt. I was in shock, and I couldn't really get my head around what was going to happen, so I just agreed with anything anyone said. Driving through Freetown, you felt like an excited child. Yeah, we were so taken in by the brightly colored patchwork of buildings, hand-painted signs, and women's fashion. We couldn't stop shifting our gaze from left to right. We were so afraid we were going to miss something. The first official day of the trip, we met with UNICEF, and they briefed us on what would be an eight-day field trip. The plan being, we would visit schools and clinics from Port Loco to Makeni and all the way up to Kabbalah, covering a distance roughly 300 kilometers. Visiting the women's clinics, we were confronted with our assumption that breastfeeding is the most natural thing in the world, and that those living in poverty would obviously choose breastfeeding because it was readily available and free. Of course, we were totally wrong. Because of cultural and traditional reasons, a lot of mothers don't breastfeed, which leads to poor nutrition and disease. The clinic we visited, and many others like it, are on a mission to teach women this quote-unquote most natural thing in the world. We saw through their hand-recorded charts that their efforts are paying off. Fewer babies were malnourished or dying. We followed the nurses around the clinic, watching them work. Upon entering a tiny little room, we saw one of the nurses pricking the finger of a pregnant woman and putting the blood on a testing stick. We asked another nurse, what is happening? She told us the woman was being tested for malaria. Yeah, so we asked, um, when should we get the answer? And she told us it just takes a few minutes. Then she showed us a testing stick. The result was positive and we were taken by surprise and didn't really know how to react. The feeling was just like, oh my God, what will happen to her? But the nurse reassured us it was fine. Finding out the result was a relief for the woman because she would get the treatment. Two pills a day for three days and uh, then she would be free of the disease. We found ourselves with a large group of kids who had a day free from school. So with the direction from Mayata, one of our UNICEF guides, a relay race was organized. Depending on how you look at it, it was either a triumph or a tragedy. Those kids wiped the floor with us. It was like watching a race between an elephant and a cheetah. Yeah, and it was really, really fun. Our first encounter with Susan was during our meeting with the group of men who run the Teachers University in Port Loco. We were all sitting around listening to these old men tell us about the university and the programs it teaches. But a group of women had gathered outside the gazebo where the meeting was being held. One woman in particular would chime in with insightful answers to the questions we were asking. After the meeting finished, we all talked about how impressive she was. She was so outspoken and so spontaneous. We decided we wanted to come back and interview her, so we did. This is the time for women. This is our time. And we too should put effort. They cannot push us and then we just relax. We should go the extra mile. We tell the children, you have the potential to even be a lecturer. You have the potential to even be a doctor. You have the potential to even be a whole head of state. The first school we would visit was a 45-minute drive outside of McKinney. We were eager to get out there and see what it was we were there to see. 
Ibrahim grew up in a tiny village not far from the school he now teaches at. He completed his teacher's training, and instead of going to Freetown to try and make more money, as so many others do, he came back to his home village to teach at a local school. And we were invited to watch him uh, teach that class, and it was really clear he loves what he do. And the kids in the class are really lucky to have such a passionate and engaging teacher. Yeah, it was humbling to watch him teach this jam-packed class with the most basic supplies. Things we would regard as rubbish, rocks, old plastic bags and water bottles. Talk about being resourceful. If one thing became clear over the eight days we traveled around Sierra Leone, it was that women are driving positive change and progress in the country. And we had the pleasure of meeting with several mothers clubs in different small villages outside of Kabbalah. The groups are made up of women who have a strong belief in children's education, equality and human rights. The clubs focus on the education of children living in their community. If children don't show up at school, representatives of the mothers club go and speak to the parents directly. If a child is working, they will do their best to convince the parents to send the child to school instead. They also intervene to stop child marriages of girls in their community, like Fatuma. Yeah, Fatuma was married off to a local policeman at the age of 16. When the mothers' club learned of the marriage, they traveled the 50 kilometers to the village she was in, and they rescued her and returned her to the family and back to school. Now she acts as a mentor to other young girls in her community and has plans to be a nurse after completing her education. These clubs are in control of their own money, which is typically invested in food and school supplies, but can also be invested into projects like building water wells or school maintenance. To keep building their financial resources, the mothers also produce agricultural products and sell them so they can reinvest into their children's education, all their work is voluntary. Spending time with the mothers' clubs was such a positive experience. Seeing women team up, and sometimes even against the support of their husbands, drives a lot of change in society. It was really inspiring. We saw how passionate they were about ensuring high-quality education for their children and protecting them from early marriages and pregnancies so they can go and complete their school, which is not a very common in rural parts of Sierra Leone. We met a lot of strong individuals who are motivated and constantly plan new projects to increase the quality of living and to create a better future for their children. During the last uh, evening in Kabbalah, day before heading back to Freetown, we wanted to have a farewell dinner with Isa, our main UNICEF contact and guide for this trip. 
He's out in the fields five to six days a week, all year round, going from villages to villages all across of Sierra Leone. So I asked him, what drives you to do what you do? And he answered that he has this kind of picture in his mind of the fur that's nearly impossible to get to, jungle, and beyond that there's a village, and in this village there's a tiny hut. And in the tiny hut there sits this small child in need of a vaccine and an education. And he sees it as his duty to get that vaccine to that child and to get that child to school. Sunday was our last day in Kabbalah, and it was an emotional day. We knew we had a long drive ahead of us, but also we were made to feel so welcomed and were treated so good with such hospitality that we felt a bit melancholy about saying goodbye. On the drive back, we had a lot of time to reflect on the days out in the field. As we were sitting in our cars, looking out the window, we passed by all these small villages. It was a Sunday and uh, people were off work, but they were, they were like sitting there and they were happy and the grown-ups were sitting on the porches talking and laughing and the kids were running around playing. But then you get this feeling that it's such a shame that this country, which is full of warm and friendly people, has had to go through everything it's gone through. It's kind of hard to understand how a country so rich in natural resources can be one of the poorest countries in the world. Yeah, but despite all that, there is a real feeling of hope. Seeing the dedication and the hard work of organizations like UNICEF and Cause Canada was extremely humbling. And talking to people like Susan and Ibrahim, passion and drive to make Sierra Leone a better place just radiates from them. UNICEF was eager to hear about the days out in the field, what our impressions were, and what we thought worked and didn't work. They were really pleased to hear how impressed we were with the Mothers Clubs, for example. Yeah, and they had quite ambitious plans for expanding the program throughout the entire country. Getting feedback from us, outsiders, reassured them of the program's potentials for real and lasting change. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our stories. If you want to find out even more about our trip or are interested on going on an eyewitness trip yourself, you can visit the IKEA Foundation's blog. Thanks. Uh, Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.